Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now today is Friday, praise God. Now today is the first Friday in the month of September. Aren't you excited? You're learning about God's mercy, praise God. Hey, 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 God is so loving, he's so good, he's so merciful. He's so merciful. How has the month been? If God is so merciful, you should be experiencing the mercy of God in your life. Can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? And remember, more. Praise God. Say with me, Father. I demand right now for my daily bread. And I receive it from your hand. It's coming to me right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, then, we've been talking about the mercy of God. God says, ask me for mercy. See, in every area of your life, every area of your life, be deliberate about walking in God's mercy. You see, when we talk about mercy, people only think about, oh, I sinned. God, please have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Ah, the mercy of God is bigger than that. Before you even sinned, the mercy was full. The whole earth. David said, Psalm 119, verse 64. The, David said, The whole earth, come on, Abaya. The earth is full of God's mercy. Mercy is not only God's response to your wrong. Mm -mm. Is bigger than that. Mercy, mercy has everything to do with even when you do right. Okay? So it's it, it's by God's mercy that he builds an hedge around you. Just like he did for Adam and Eve. You remember I was there. We didn't even get into um, what I was getting, but I began to explain the hedge and how, how people break the hedge. You know, yesterday I was talking to you about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And how Satan made them to disobey God. Now, when that happens, they broke the hedge. And because they broke the hedge, here's the problem now. Now, God had to drive them out of the garden. And he says, he says, go out of the garden and then begin to till the land. Now, they were not tilling the land in the garden. But he, when he drove them out, they had to go till the land. Now, that's where toiling started. Now, why did toiling start? Because the very instruction that would keep them from toiling, they tampered with it. What was the instruction? Keep my portion. You see, when, when people begin to tell you, bring all kinds of understanding about you not giving God a tent. I told you this thing before. Anyone who is telling you not to tithe, that person is walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. Yeah. I'm saying it with full chest. If you like, take it. If you like, don't take it. I have this principle in life and as a teacher of God's word. There are things I will say to you. You may find out. I pray that not you. But there are people that will find out the day they meet Jesus that I told them the truth. So I, I, I wouldn't back out from it. I wouldn't change because everybody's saying, I'm telling you this, anyone, and, and listen, you can go do your own personal search. Not, not by reading books. Go to the Lord. He's alive. No, there's one, there's one principle I always say. So why are we arguing? The man we are arguing about is alive. Jesus is alive. Okay, let's ask him. Say Jesus did not receive tithing in the New Testament. And let's ask him now. How do we ask him? You see your problem? You don't even know him. And you're talking about what he said and what he did not say. He's alive. Let's ask him. And then they go, eh, eh, it's clear from the school. Come on. I, I, I mean, if you go to court and you're arguing about something that is written, the judge will just simply ask a question. Who wrote this thing? Is the person alive? Eh, why don't we subpoena the person? Let the person come and explain to us what he means. 
That ends everything. You won't just sit down and waste your time. So I wonder how people sit down. I know this is what the Bible says. This scripture, this scripture, this. Come on. The person we are talking about is a life. Let's ask him. If you don't know how to ask him and receive answer from him, it means you're the wrongest person to even talk about him. Yes, you don't know him. And even those, you know, who say, no, according to the Bible. See, there's no point for this argument. It's so silly. Ask him. And you know, you know, the Bible says this one, this one, this one. We are not supposed by this, by this, we're not supposed to. I said, sorry, we're not doing some, we're not in Bible school. Neither are we in a law class. We're living life. This is life. So is that what the Lord told you? Uh, but the scripture is clear. No, is that what the Lord, anybody who's telling you not to tell, that's the same question you should ask the person. Did the Lord tell you this? And watch them fumble. I'm telling you, you will watch them fumble. Because if there's any iota of honesty in their heart, even if it's 0.001%, they will not want to find themselves lying against God. So when you ask them, did the Lord tell you this? They'll find a way to squiggle their way out by saying that, no. See, when you study the Bible, the Bible is like, like uh, 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 uh. Then you ask them the question, is the Lord alive? Is Jesus alive today? They say yes. They will say yes now. So, have you asked him? All this theory of the bringing, have you asked him? Then now they want to now say the word of God is him. And so what is the word of God? They want to now take you to the Bible. You see, that, that's why, you know, sometimes when you hear me give some definitions, it's so that you kill all these uh, speculations, okay? So when you hear me say the Bible is not the word of God, it's, it's because, see, when you journey with the Lord, understanding comes to you. And when those understanding comes to you, you begin to ask questions. Yes, because as you grow in understanding, to create lots of questions about where you're coming from. Yes. And you don't ask any man those questions. You ask the Lord because he's alive. I was asking the Lord, you know, I said, but Lord, you know, you know when all these arguments started and, and, and now the Lord has already taught, taught me about Titan, you know. Long ago, I told you I wrote a book on, on Titan in the year. I actually wrote that book in the year 2007, but the book was released the next year, 2008. Yeah, I think so, yeah. You know, so I, he had taught me this thing. So I was working on it already, enjoying my life. And then when all these arguments started, there's always the question, why didn't Jesus receive tithes? At least there was one time Jesus was watching the offering. So I went before the Lord. I said, the Lord is true. Now, I'm not saying I doubt him. I was like, well, I think you should have received tithes, you know, so that, see, all these arguments should have been laid to him. The Lord asked, who told you I did not receive tithes? Huh? Where? And he showed me. Oh, dear God. I ain't You know, you read something, I read something, and the Lord opens your eyes. Yeah. Now, now, you see, you see, there is a difference, and, and, and that's what I always encourage people. Have a relationship with the Lord. Let it be real. Don't, don't have a relationship that is based on study. Have a real relationship where you talk to him and truly you're building your life according to his word, okay? Now, if you're building your life according to his word, it will not be according to scriptures. But you're building your life according to the revelations that he opens your heart to. And why is he opening your eyes to those revelations? Because you are. Now, now, I share this with you because even me, you know, there are times the Lord will teach me something. And there are some gray areas of that thing that he has taught me. But then I hear another person share his own experience with the Lord. It will now bring fine, fine tuning to my own. Okay, like, ah, oh, hey, now I understand what, you know, the Lord was saying to me. Yes. Now, even with that too, sometimes it's still not clear. Then I say, Lord, I heard this person say this, and this is what he told me. So then he now opens me up to it. Okay. So that's how I was asking the Lord. And I'm like, Lord, you should have just 
there should be an example of you receiving tithes. And then the Lord said to me, I received tithes. Who told you I didn't receive tithes? Like, but not where? And I was trying to think, you know, the women who supported Jesus, maybe. He said, no, clearly. I said, where? And then the Lord said to me, the donkey that I used to enter into Jerusalem, what do you think that was? Oh. Jesus told his son, I was going to the city, you'll see a donkey tied, which no man has ever ridden. I said, and then, you know how the Lord, you see, that, that's my relationship with this. So, so in your mind, I stole somebody's donkey or I commandeered somebody's donkey. Or do you think I had gone to the guy and said, look, tie your donkey for me. Uh, I'll send my servants to come and collect it. Maybe they didn't know. No. He said, that was that man's tight. <sighs> How? Go and read what Moses commanded the Jews. Mm. Moses had told them in the year of tithe, I think this is in Deuteronomy 14 or Deuteronomy 18 or thereabout. Moses had told them that in the year of tithe, which is every three years, you will bring your tithe at the end of the year and keep it at your gate. Then he says, the Levites, the widows, the fatherless, and the orphans and strangers will come and take to their food. So everyone who has tithes to pay that particular year will keep it at their gates. That this was a Jewish practice. Okay, it was a Jewish practice. Now that's why sometimes when people argue if tithing was important, we would have seen you the, the apostles would have taught. The apostles didn't how do you teach tithing to a Jewish man that it's his tradition? It's his tradition. You don't teach that. You don't come and say, I want to teach you your tradition. We know this thing. So much that Jesus was even telling the, 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 the Pharisees, he said, You guys, you tithe even for meat. The smallest thing, you tithe of it. That's to tell you how faithful, in quotes, they were where tithing is concerned. So Jesus was speaking by observation. He said, You guys tithe out of the smallest thing. You were too, con- you're too concerned about this smallest. We must tie. Because they were following Abraham. He gave tithe of all. Okay. That's to tell you that tithe was a normal practice in their day. And Jesus was in no way telling them, you're doing the wrong thing. No, he was just telling them that the same way you apply your, your strictness to tithe and apply to every other thing. That's what Jesus was saying to them. So the Jewish people were too conscious of Titan. And so this man had brought his donkey and kept them. And he was keeping it there for the Lord. That's why Jesus did not tell his disciples. To, well, if any man asks you, tell them Jesus have need of it. They would have stoned them. Because <laughs> what do you mean? That Jesus. He said, tell them the Lord have need of it. And he will let you go. Now, that's exactly what happened. They went and they were like, so, hey, stop there. So the fact that they kept it in their gate doesn't mean they didn't keep an eye on it. Why are you losing it? The Lord have need of it. Now, when you say the Lord have need of it, what comes to the owner's mind is that you're taking it to the temple or the Levite, a Levite have sent you. You understand what I'm saying? Now, that's why Jesus said, he was specific. If anybody asks you, tell them. So he didn't just go losing it and bring it. No, he says, tell them the Lord have need of it because that thing belonged to the Lord. And they let it go because now he's free. The Lord has come for my tithe, okay? Yes. What a joy that would have been that day. Now, I've read that story many, many times, but I never saw that that was tithe. <laughs> yes. So now, when somebody go, hey, Jesus, I said, you know, in my heart, I'm just like, ah, foolishness is, is terrible. Thank God he helped me. And I'm sharing it with you so that you will know also. And I'm not telling you to take my word for it. Go and ask them. I got this thing from the Lord. What are you talking about? But you see, it started right from the Garden of Eden. And because they broke that hedge, they were sent out 
to start toiling. Toiling came because they broke their hedge of tithing. Yeah. Now, when God came to Abraham, when Melchizedek appeared to him, he got into a covenant with him. What is that covenant? He brought bread and wine to Abraham, okay? And, and they entered into a covenant and, and, and then says, look, this is symbolic that I'm going to feed you. I'm going to take care of you. God was bringing Abraham back to that place of Eden in terms of taking care of him. And then you on your part to show that you are in covenant with me, you will give a tenth of everything to me. Everything you tithe of. You are Aiko Beretesia. You, you are keeping God's hedge of mercy around that thing. So you find people say, eh, eh, I, I tithe from my, 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 my pay, my salary. But you know, I don't tithe from money. People dash me. Do I have to? I don't say, oh, I tithe from well, my business money. But uh, that's my main job. That's one, the one I tithe from. Every other benefit I get here and there, I don't, I don't, I don't tithe from it. Listen, listen, listen. You see, when Moses told them, you shall remember the Lord your God, for he's the one that gives you power to get well. So you, you recognize that for this thing to happen, for this goodness to come to me, it came as a result of God's mercy. So I recognize the mercy of God is available in this thing. So I tithe of it, okay? Now, you tithe of it. You see, I can tell you stories and stories and stories of experiences and experiences. The problem is not tithe. The problem with a lot of God's children, that's what we should be focusing on truly today, is how do we tithe, Okay. And that, that's not today's talk. That's another day's talk. If the Lord allows, allow us to go there. But I brought this up to show you how financial, financially God had, before even the world began, set an hedge of mercy around our finances. Now, if you, now what does Satan do? He comes up with preachers and they start twisting your mind. Eh, all these people telling you to bring their tithe, they are, they are eating your money, they are wicked. Same thing he did to Eve. You will not really die. God knows. The pastor wants to eat your money. That's why he's telling you to bring your tithe. So you not start business. Hmm. But it's true. This pastor said, when he collects this my money, what? That's so last, yeah, last week he bought one brand new car. Maybe it's our tithe he used to bring. That's exactly what happened to Eve. Ah, these three. Hmm. The tree is really, really good for food. Though. I said, they are walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. The same way the serpent was walking by that spirit. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? The serpent was walking by that spirit. The serpent was normal serpent. But then there was a spirit that was walking in that serpent. Pumping words. In their minds. And so also preachers are telling you, ah, don't tithe. Does this one tithe? Does this one tithe? Yet you're not richer than him. Mm -hmm. The same thing Satan did to Eve. And Eve began to consider. The same way you're beginning to consider. It's true. Even this money said, this tithe, can I can you really use it for something good for my life? Continue. God was so shocked. I said, where are you? <laughs> you are the same one. They are the same one that when something begins to happen, you say, hey, maybe it's because I've been eating my tie too. That's you hiding from God now. There is nothing Adam and Eve did that was super strange. Many people still do it today. But if you can turn around today, the mercy of God is still available. Yes. He will not tell, oh, sorry, he's finished. The door of mercy is closed. No, if you, as long as there is breath in you, you can repent today. And that's what Hebrews tells us today. If you will hear his voice, if you will hear his voice today, 
and let God's grace and mercy flow by your life. Pray. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Don't just hear this message and just, ah, this thing, I have, I have, when it comes to tithing, I always told you this, and, 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 and this, is, this is what brings an end to every argument. The tithe belongs to the Lord, and make sure you give it to him. Remember I was telling earlier, God is alive. He's not dead. So let no man tell you, this is how you must give your tithe. No, no. The Lord himself will receive the tithe from your hand. Ask him. Ask him. If he's not alive in you, you still have a problem. Ask him. He will command you. He will tell you where to take his money to. Yes, he will. And that's how you know he has received it. And then you'll see the result. If he has received it, there will be, an, there will be some results in your life. This is how we live. Praise God. My time is up and I pray. Father, I see people repenting even right now. Yes. The Lord is turning your heart from all those false teachings. From that antichrist. The Lord is stirring your heart again. Because he is building that edge of mercy around you again. Father, I ask that your mercy will receive these words. And restore. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.